As a court please, my lord, I'm told that there's a need. Hello. I'm told that there's a need to attend to that application, the urgent application. Oh, I see. By, by the um, okay. accused. All right. Yeah. Affected accused persons. Yeah, fine. They must um, go and consult. Yes. Uh, maybe we should, we can then adjourn until Monday, my lord. Mm. Okay. Fine. Because yeah. All right. Thank you so much for Umlung where to end is S Putumayo the urgent application that is being submitted next week. This is the second time, okay, Umlungwetu brings a Judge Rata's courtroom to an immediate halt. Like, wow, she is bringing in all the power, okay, all the power. Well, technically, it's actually Judge Rata making the decisions after she makes her request. But you know what? I am here for it. I am here for it because I am seeing a changed man. Judge Rata is a completely a different human being around anything to do with Umlungwetu or as it or am I reading too much into it? It is just that it is an urgent application and Judge Rata is the guy, okay? The guy who wants to work overtime for the urgent application to go through for the solitary confinement conditions. Again, Gininda is right there on the stand and there is nothing he can do. Dolala! And onwards they go. Onwards they go. Accused number three and five um, were requested by their uh, legal counsel to consult, okay? To consult so that they can finish up where they left off. I'm not sure if that means they didn't arrive at 9 a.m. this morning or that they still need additional time. Either way, it brought the court in session to an immediate halt. And you know what? I absolutely love it. Absolutely love it. Look at how the universe works. The universe is waiting for Ungo Mizolo. He has to be here for the finale. Um, so they continue Monday, okay? Uh, judge Rata will be, of course, the presiding judge. Geninda will be right there in the witness box. Baloy will be continuing his evidence in chief. But they will still be on the topic of Ungo Mizulu putting the proposition that Ulongwe Twala was shot in the ankle and the bullet was removed after his foot became septic. Mm -mm -mm. His foot became septic. He went to the late a doctor and then was referred to the other doctor who actually pulled out the bullet. So it makes me wonder because Geninda has already told us he's been driving up and down, up and down in search of um, the doctors. But my question, my thought process rather is, did Ngomezulu reveal that information too early? Did he reveal that information too early? Should he have held on to it until it was time for him to actually bring those witnesses and then they say what they got to say on the stand not giving a Geninda time to investigate, dropping the bombs, and moving on. I'm really curious about that. What are your thoughts? Should Ungo Mezulu have waited it out? Type a 1 in the comment section if you believe he should have waited it out. Or type a 2 if you think the mic drop in August was well-timed. And even though Geninda tries to do an investigation, he will not find anything. Because he does not know who... Gomezulu's witnesses are. Who are they? I saw another comment say that witness is definitely Kelly Kumalo because she is ready to talk. She's been threatened, but now she is ripe and ready. But then if it is Kelly Kumalo and Uzandi already took the stand and said a whole lot of nothing, <laughs> what does that mean for Uzandi? Is she also being thrown under the by Ukeli Kumalo? Has Kelly Kumalo had enough of this Nganegwane? Will the five accused be spared and not found guilty? 
definitely want to hear your thoughts on this in the comment section down below. You already know I will be right there to engage with you. And yeah, this is an interesting one. I think it's an interesting one. I'm, I definitely want to see where you guys will take it. Uh, will you guys take it to Ngomezulu shouldn't have or Ngomezulu should have? Yeah, I'm going to wait for you in the comment section. Thanks so much for watching. You know, you already know what to do. You know the house rules. If you've made it this far in the video, you absolutely have my heart. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, okay? Because I'm looking where to is doing the things over there in Judge Rata's courtroom. But you know what? I'm, I'm uh, good for her. Good for her. Um, accused number three and five will finally get their day in court for the solitary confinement. DCS. What say you? What will you give as your reasoning? And will Kirinda be called over in that courthouse as a witness again? Oh, guningi, guningi. But let me end it here. I'll catch you on my next upload. I confirm my appointment for accused three and five, the applicants in the urgent application. Mm. Um, I wish to convey my the difficulty I currently experience to obtain instructions and to um, finalize the urgent application that's due to be heard next week. We have been assured by the respondents, uh, DCS in this matter, that they will facilitate and accommodate consultations with accused three and five. I am not experienced that accommodations uh, accommodation as promised in the papers. I contacted them this morning requesting to please accommodate us to consult after the court proceedings. We have voluminous proceedings which we must canvas with the accused before the court. Mm -hmm. I've been informed that should I wish to hand these documents to the accused, it should be perused by the DCS the officials and then only will it be handed to the accused with the court. Uh, I, my submission is it's, it's infringement of the client and attorney privilege, mm -hmm. and I refuse to subject my clients to that. I will therefore have no opportunity or alternative to request this court to accommodate the request to stand out the proceedings to enable me to obtain instructions from my clients pertaining to the urgent application to ensure compliance with the practice directives of the urgent court. Now, which, which council says, or which official says you must first have sight of the documents before you, you hand them over to your client? Uh, the official is present in court and my father... Where is he or he? Where is the said official? Do you know, sir? Oh, well, what I said, I said if they, they're going to take the documents yeah. uh, to, to back to the send, we, we, we're going to hand over to CMEX, uh, check the document, and then, so that they can have a, a, them in the send. Which so, documents are you referring to, sir? The, the ones which council has? Yeah, the one the council he said you wanted to hand over to to us so that they can have them. What's the problem then? Usually in CMEX, when there's a, some documents coming from court, they check those documents and then they hand over to the inmates. No, no, I don't think it's necessary. Who do, you, who do we call at Siemens? Who, who's this? Is it Mr. Mamalo? Mr. Kabeo. Who? Mr. Kabeo, the head of the center. Do you have a phone with you? Yeah, I do have a phone. Why don't you phone him and say, I'm saying that the documents must be handed over to the clients because it's attorney and client privilege. They can see the documents when they are saved on the correctional services, not before. Okay. Can you say that to him? I'll, I'll just phone him. Yeah, just... Is he here? No, it's not here. Okay. Yeah, call him. Your Lordship, may I please also address another 
um, to strengthen the experience with the DCS in this regard. Uh, they are undertaking that they will not frustrate the consultation process. We are experiencing extreme difficulty to consult and obtain instructions. Uh, we bend it backwards to ensure that we can consult with our clients in this regard. I request that after hours not to intrude on the court's time and a witness is present before the court. They are very adamant they knock off at 4 o'clock and there is no one available. I requested an indulgence to consulting the weekend. I'm still awaiting for a response. As the court pleases. Weekend. <laughs> so they say they are not employed, they are not working on, on weekends. The Lordship, I don't hear. I say, uh, is the staff at Correctional Services say they, they don't work over weekends? Um, they don't accommodate legal visitations during weekends. Oh, they it, don't. Is that their rules? Family. Is that's that their rules? rules? That's their practice. Okay. But they undertook to come back to me. I, I emphasized that it is an urgent matter. Mm. I further requested further indulgence then if the weekend is not available then after the proceedings are done in court and they say um, that they knock off at four and no one is available. How, how many hours do you need to consult? Your Lordship, this is a voluminous application. How many hours do you need? Three hours, Your Because Lordship. if you're telling me about the documents, I have no sight of them. Three, three hours? Three hours. Can we adjourn for three hours and then you attend to that? Is that okay? It's indeed. So we'll come back. What time is the... By the way? It's three hours from... From 10 o'clock. It's probably. Um, it's 11, it's, 12, 1. It's 16 minutes past 1. Right. Uh, so three hours will be, um, yeah, it will, yeah, will be around lunchtime. Can we come back at 1 o'clock then? Uh, maybe 2. Uh, 2 o'clock, okay, fine. Uh, we'll adjourn until 2, okay? Cool. And that will solve all your problems, I take it. Okay, you have heard the reasons why. Because Oh, he wants to say something also. Are they what? Oh, you are involved also. No, no, not the application. The testimony of this witness uh, yesterday, my lord. Something that I objected to, but I'll address the court at two regarding that. Okay, let's hear the gentleman. He said it's okay. He said it's okay. Yeah, yeah we'll adjourn until two o'clock then. <laughs>